Just take a gander at that view. Wow. No wonder this area is so heavily populated. If I could live with a view like that, I would definitely do that. Even, even the view of this town. You have the scaffolding over there. You have these platforms right here. These uh, wind socks, which are a very nice touch. They're very festive and colorful. And then we have the festivity of the inn. Speaking of the inn, let's go ahead and go in. Because there are some things that we need to grab inside that we need. Hello, everyone, by the way. I'm Pal, and welcome back to Okami. Uh, right now, <laughs> we're going to be going into this room right here because the girl that was in the bathroom, like, last episode? Yeah, it was. No. L episode before last. The, the girl that was in the bathroom is finally out, and she's now in her room. Haruka. I was silly to think I could come here alone and... Oh, what am I to do? Ha. <sighs> Maybe I should resign myself to falling in battle. No, the whole meaning of my journey would be for naught. Hey, what's eating you, little lady? Hey, you're that dog that doesn't knock. <laughs> yeah, that's us. Yeah, Amaterasu here can be a bad little wolf sometimes. I'm Isun, by the way. Let's hear your story, cutie pie. Oh, Isun. My name's Haruka. My father was murdered by monsters. I set out on a journey to avenge his death. But I quickly discovered I was no match for such terrible creatures. I had no idea how I'd ever get my revenge. Ill-fated beauty. Haruka. Say, you may be small, but you ride a big wolf. <laughs> I see that you noticed. You must be a fearsome warrior. Especially to have such a nice ride. Would you go take care of my enemies for me? Look, here are their pictures. Um... Not to be racist against dead fish, but they all look the same. Although all of their names are very unique. Weirdo the Abhorrent. I love that name. That's so cool. I mean, it's not something I'd name my child or my dog, but it's, it's a cool name. Weirdo the Abhorrent for Smash 4. Sorry. <laughs> Each monster will be marked in the same manner. You'll know them the moment you see them, because there will be a cutscene. But they are very sneaky and only venture out at night. Please exact my re revenge upon those denizens of the night. You obtained Haruka's revenge contract. Leave it to me, little lady. The magnificent Isun's gonna strike down your enemies for you. Indirectly, he is, by association, because he will be touching the person who does kill them when that person, or dog, or wolf, or canine, or goddess does kill them so he will kill strike them down by association so before we leave i want to point out this daruma statue and just the sim the um symbolism that it contains i i know that it's it's just a daruma statue you know this is supposed to be sent into ancient japan so of course there'd be these statues or dolls rather but i just want to point this out because this is really really neat I love all of the uh, the subtlety that the designers put into this one model, just right here. So, sadly, I can't really show it here, but Darumas are made out of paper mache, and they're basically um, they're weighted at the bottom, and they're sp so you know when whatever direction you turn them, they will always right themselves. I wish that it could be shown here by me hitting this, but sadly it can't. Can I? Yeah, sadly, it just bounces up and down. But believe me, it's it's weighted, so if you were to knock this down, it would come right back up. And this is just a little bit of the symbolism of these. I just wanted to point out, because I, I researched these recently, and I just thought it was really interesting. So, first of all, these are supposed to be a representation of the person who made... who was the founder of the Zen sect of Buddhism. Uh, ba pardon me if I butcher this pronunciation... Bodhim, Bodhidharma, I believe. That's how I pronounce it. It's probably not correct. But that's who it's supposed to be represent, representing. And there is symbolism in every single aspect of these dolls. A everything from the facial hair to the uh, color of the robe that's supposed to be a robe that he's wearing to the shape and 
everything. It's just amazing. Even the even the fact that it only has one eye. So the fact that it's a roly poly toy, you know, it's it's sort of like a toy. It's sort it's also very symbolic. It kind of represents the ability to have success or overcome tribulation or recover from misfortune. So it it basically it always bounces back, which is what people should do. They should always bounce back and never stay never uh never take your defeat lying down basically which is which is a very good message i mean it it is part of buddhism and i don't agree with everything that they believe but it's it's something that i really i really really find interesting just some of these thoughts the japanese were super deep thinkers and they still are i mean if they put this in the game um I'll, you'll see one reason why they're deep th why modern japanese um, designers are such deep thinkers even now. I'll show that in a second. Uh, the color is representa is representory of something, but I just want to point out the other thing because we have a lot to do this episode and I don't want to waste a ton of time just talking about one thing. So I'll, I'll just talk about the, uh, the eyes real quick and then I'll leave a link to an article about them in the video description. So anyway, um, when Daruma are sold, the eyes are very commonly blank and what that what the purpose that serves is the owner once they buy it if they set a goal then they will dot one of the eyes of the daruma and upon achieving that goal then they will dot the other eye so whenever they see their daruma with one eye they remember that goal which is is very it's very interesting it's it's very symbolic it's very uh not customary uh tradition Airy. Culture. <laughs> it, it's culture. <laughs> but here's here's a here's another thing. In Okami, in this game, sometimes we will see Daruma with one eye. And you know what we're supposed to do here? If we dot the other eye, just like what people do when they achieve their goals, our goal is achieved, and that is we get a reward from it. Which is very, it's very cool. It's very interesting what they did here. They they did something that actually exists, and they did something that's very symbolic, and I like that. Especially because it's not just a case of the game saying, like, here's a bridge, uh, it's missing, so you need to draw it in. It isn't like that at all. It's an actual thing where the Daruma have one eye. It's just not fill in what's blank. Many people, when they play this game, would probably think that, but... It's just amazing how much you can see that the designers tie in, how much Japanese culture the designers tie into this game. It's not just a statue, it's a secret with a story of its own. It's just really nice. Although, going back to the game, since my explanation is is pretty much done. Oh, also the, dub the double eyes are kind of as um, seen as opening your eyes because now you've achieved a goal so you see things differently, sort of like that. But anyway, going back to the game, and what we just did, we dotted the second eye, right? Traditionally, da uh, Daruma dolls were bought as a household, and basically, the head of the household would be the one that would dot the eyes and stuff. So basically, they were trying to work towards a goal, and we just kind of, we didn't mess it up, but we kind of threw them off by, by dotting that, because then they're going to think that they achieved the goal when they haven't, so they have to buy another one. So, it was a little bit selfish of us, but, you know, it's, it's, this world is ours. <laughs> These people will bow before me. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, we kind of committed an act of vandalism just now. So, I'm going to leave before this woman calls the authorities, although, I could just blackmail her with the fact that she killed Sleepy's brother. Or Sleepy himself. Okay, now that that very drawn-out explanation is out of the way, and I feel like Skyward Sword again, be I feel like the S Skyward Sword LP is still going, because <laughs> I remember describing Dogu statues and what they did. Actually, I did that again not too many episodes ago, so, you know, it's it, Skyward Sword's never going to be an LP that I forget, because it was my first, and it wasn't as, you know, I wasn't as fluent in the art of let's playing than the others. I'm not going to forget it or head, hang my head in shame because of it, but because it's it's just a unique experience. And also I'm stuttering right now, so <laughs> I even if I even if I was drastically better, which I, I do I do think I am, I have 
no room for talking about not stuttering. So anyway, we haven't moved more than a football field this episode, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this place. We're going to be setting out to find the one of the three canines. Oh wait, no. Yeah, we're going to find one of the three missing canines, so let's go. So, with that very drawn out explanation out of the way, I would like to carry on. We're going to... I, I last said that at the end of last episode that we would like to go to Kamiki, or I would like to go to Kamiki, but that's actually not going to happen, because I found out that the designers don't want you to do that, because I went there, and it was bad news bears, because things were, activated, were not activating when they should have, which means that we don't have everything we need to to do the stuff over there. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Basically, stuff didn't activate because we didn't have the stuff to activate it. So, that that's a much simpler explanation. So, uh, we're here at the northmost gate. Let's talk to this guy. Huh? Pushing this wall is exhausting. Ah, have you caught the scent of it too, Pooch? The scent of the secret place that welcomes only the good-hearted. The scent of Sasa Sanctuary. Everyone that tries to go there gets lost around here. But that sacred gate, he, there has to be a clue. This must be the place. And this is just between you and me, but Sasa Sanctuary is where all the sparrows live, right? Well, I saw one of the young sparrow girls coming out of there. So I'm sure the sanctuary must be some around here somewhere. I saw one of the young sparrow girls coming out of here. So I'm sure Sasa Sanctuary must be behind this rock somewhere. I wonder where that little girl was heading off to. I hope she hasn't gone anywhere near, the, near that nasty old couple. But never mind that. I must find the entrance to the sanctuary. You know what? It's really sad. It's really quite sad. Because all he had to do is walk around here and go through this gate. Isn't that sad? It, he was so close. And yet he was so far. He even mentioned the gate. So, yeah. I guess because he veered off the path, he doesn't get to go in. I wonder if the designers are trying to say something. Okay, let's go to the Sasa Sanctuary, a brand new area of the game. Sasa Sanctuary. Redundancy. Bamboo Village. Sasa Sanctuary. For the third time. Redundancy upon redundancy. Ami, isn't this the place that Mr. Bamboo mentioned? He said he couldn't get any bamboo to make his bamboo wear. Shouldn't bamboo wear be one word because it's like a copyright maybe thing? I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead and go up to the gate, see if they'll open. Hey, hey, hey! Chirp. Hey you, Scruffy, what are you doing in Sasa Sanctuary? Skipping in here with that innocent look in on your face. You have a lot of nerve for a wolf. You know this is the turf of the Sparrow Clan, right? We can't just let you turn around and leave. Oh no. We'll tan your hide and send you packing. Boss, let this cocky mutt have it! Is that even supposed to be a bird? Hey, Scruffy, do you even know who this is? This is the mighty leader of the Sparrow Clan. That's right, the Great Jumba. <laughs> the Hut. Ha <laughs> ha, I made a reference and hopefully everyone gets it because if you don't get it, I will be very sad and I will actually feel old for the one of the first times in my life. Big Daddy Jumba, the Hut. Okay, boss, take it away. He's all yours. Chirp. Uh-oh. The boss is seriously angry. What in the wild world of ketchup is going on here? Listen up, Scruffy. The boss's precious daughter has been kidnapped, and he's mad. We're doing everything we can to find her. We've searched all over. No one's getting through that gate until she's safe and sound. Go on. Off with you. Well then, I suppose we're not going this way. Huh? They're not going to let us in. And what was that about their do boss's daughter being kidnapped? Hmm. Well, that guy did say that a sparrow girl flew out of there, so that must be her. So we have a lead. And also he mentioned that there was an older couple, a creepy older couple. Also, 
I believe it was Mr. Bamboo. No, well, I don't think it was Mr. Bamboo, but some of the talk of the Kusa Village town mentioned that right around the time that Sasa Sanctuary closed, the old that same old couple has had bought a birdcage. So I guess we need to pay them a visit. That's our biggest lead. Because we're Ami. Ami the Sun Goddess. There we go. That works. Okay, now before we leave, I want to nab a sp uh, stray bead while we're here. It's just right to the f the left fountain, and it's right in front of the left fountain. So it's right here. You cannot see it. Like, this is not one of the ones that you can see. But if you dig right about here, about here, there it is. First try. It's right here. And also, it's a very beautiful chest. It's very unique. We've never seen one like that before. You obtained Stray Bead. I don't know what is is with that mo that voice this episode. Also, I don't know what it is with me stuttering. Uh, uh, I, I wish there was some medicine that stopped people from stuttering. I would buy that like crazy. Like, I'd take that all the time. But alas, there isn't. Also, this is making a cool noise. Gotta love the rhythmic tapping these babies put out. The weight of the water inside them makes them move like a seesaw. Mankind sure is incredible, huh? They made this thing with the sole purpose of making soothing sounds. That's calming. If only this stuff wouldn't disappear when I look at it. It's like the entire world of Nippon is shy. So anyway, let's go and leave and uh, scope out that old couple's house. Let's go. All right, here we are. Let's go ahead and jump down. I, you know, the best the best defense isn't good offense, which I have no idea how that applies here. So I guess we should just storm the keep, <laughs> awkwardly swimming through the river. And it's nighttime. Oh. Well then. I guess they're asleep. Wonderful. So here's their house. It also looks like a curse zone here. Wow. Look at that red sky. Is it like that when I leave here? No. Wait, let's look above the house. Look above the house, Amaterasu. Huh. I thought there might have been cloud or something up there. Huh. Well, I'm getting a strange vibe here. So... Let's go ahead and come back here in about an hour or so. When no one's around. Okay. We're gonna break into their house and steal the girl. We have no idea if she's even in there, but we're gonna break in. Okay, let's go. Oh. Hi, guys. Um, You guys still on the straight and narrow? Not stealing things from anybody? No? Okay, well, uh... I'm gonna, I'm a gonna go over here. Uh, what am I doing? Nothing. I'm not doing anything. Actually, I'm just, I'm just researching flowers for flowers digest. Uh, why am I running away? Uh, you can't know. I'm sorry. Ooh, it's a perfect, perfect way to enter the house from the top. Hopefully they can't see me. No, they're looking the other way. Okay, good. You obtained glass beads. Nice. Okay, let's go and break in. Let's go around the back. And <laughs> face plant on the roof. Okay, now behind this rock right here, and by this pond is another stray bead, which we'll go ahead and grab while we're at it. And now we can break into their house. Let's go. Let's go around here. And if... Ah! Looks like this part of the house is, like, broken, which is, they need to fix that, but... Their laziness, we can use to our advantage. Let's go ahead and break in. After I get the food they stored in the attic. There we go. Okay. It looks like this one part's been covered with wooden panels. A pretty sloppy job, I must say. I bet you could easily smash it to bits. Uh... Won't that cause noise? Nah. Who cares? We'll storm the keep. Let's go. Okay, he's asleep. Eerie, eerie shadow on the wall. She's awake. 
And this seems very sketchy. Huh? What are you doing here, you shabby-looking mongrel? You've got some nerve coming into people's houses like this. The horrible Mrs. Cutter! Okay, that seemed excessive. The moon's very bright again tonight, isn't it? Moonlight can be a real nuisance for us, you know. It seems to give us strange powers and makes our, us show our true colors. So it makes it hard to keep up a pretense of normal life. And we get so hungry on nights like that, too. <sighs> okay, as if you weren't creepy enough, I automatically just did the creepiest voice I've ever heard for you. And there's nothing in here. We can't even dig, but I guess it gives us a better view of that strange shadow that seems to be coming from this guy, Mr. Cutter. Grr, I'm so hungry. Okay. If you come out here at daytime, in the day, come out front, he'll be out here and he'll try to kill you with his cane. I think she'll try to kill you with her knives as well, so yeah. Let's go ahead and talk to her again. Uh, she says nothing else. Okay, well, she did say that Moonlight makes it hard for them to keep up their normal life. So what if we bit her and pulled her in there? What are you doing, you stupid mutt? Where were you trying to drag me off to? Nowhere. But, before I drag her into this moonlight, which is what the game wants us to do, I'm actually going to uh, equip Divine Retribution as a sub-weapon. This will help us out a lot, because there's a fight coming up. So let's pull her into the light. Arg, you saw me! You saw me! Well, where'd that shadow come from? It ain't human, whatever it is. So you saw me. Now I'm going to kill you. Now I'm going to eat you all up. Bring it on, you spooks! Come out and fight! Meet a new enemy! Crow Tangu. Now, I'm not actually going to be showing the enemy bio for this enemy because we do not have its floral finisher. So it'd be spoilers or just me posting something that is a question mark so you guys can't figure it out. So instead, I'll just tell you the strategy and then I'll show you a revised strategy once we get the technique that is their floral finisher. So what you want to do immediately is power slash both of these to the ground. Go ahead and just do this and go ahead and just start attacking just like normal. They will immediately block, but when they block, they'll turn gray and you can power slash them, which will break their block. But the reason why I want you to have the, uh, why I want to have the reflector is because since there are two, pe two enemies, you really want to be ready to counter them, which actually they never got the chance to counter. Uh, that was unexpected. I did extremely well. Okay. What, they have an attack that I didn't really get to show. They did it once, but I interrupted it. Where they threw a skull at me. And by throwing that skull, I could either power slash the skull back, or I could counter them. That's actually the reason why I wanted to have the reflector. And if you counter them, then it will be an insta-kill for them. Which is something you really want to utilize against Crotangus. Now, interesting fact about these enemies while I'm ignoring what's happening right on screen on the game. Uh, they're actually in the bestiary, which we haven't really taken a look in that just because it's a menu thing. I don't like ch showing menus too much. But it says that they're the spirit of a dead samurai uh, possessing a crow, which is interesting. It's just a cool little backstory thing. Cool detail. So anyway, in that box that Mrs. Cutter, aka the female crow Tengu, had on her back, was Chun, which is the Sparrow Girl. Oh, it was so awful being locked away by those monsters. It feels wonderful to be free again. Thanks so much, doggy. Here, let me pet you. Oh, that's cute. Sort of. My name's Chun, precious flower of Sparrow Inn. Flower of Sasa Sanctuary, Chun. Is this the girl the boss? Is this girl the boss of the Sparrow Inn? 
the boss, the sparrow inn. Ugh. Is this the girl the boss of the Sparrow Inn was looking for? That's a very disjointed sentence. I'd better get home, otherwise Pop will be worried about me. But if I go alone, those monsters might catch me again. Even though they're dead. Would you come back? Come with me back to Sasa Sanctuary, Doggy? Bah, this brat's a handful. Oh well, let's hang with her for a bit. Stupid! Why, you little... Come on, Doggy, let's go! She's frustrating, because she's so happy. And also, I can't catch her. Oh, daytime. Although, I could probably, like, power slash her. But, interesting thing, is Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Cutter and the Sparrow Girl Chun are actually a reference to mythology. I know, this is like the mythology Japanese culture episode. If I titled these episodes, I'd call this one Japanesey. I don't know. That's probably why I don't name them, because if I did, they'd probably be horrible names. So anyway, the reference to the mythology that Mr. and Mrs. Cutter and Chun reference is the story of Shita Kuri Suzume, which means tongue-cut sparrow. And basically the story is, is a kind old man, which is not Mr. Cutter, but that's who, who Mr. Cutter is based off of, is the man in the story, was walking in the woods and he came across an injured uh, sparrow calling for help sorry it wasn't injured um, and the man took pity on the sparrow and took it home and fed it rice to keep it alive but his wife who was pretty much greedy and evil didn't understand why he would waste food like that so she would, granted was not a fan of the sparrow so uh, one day, the old man was going to go out fishing, I believe it was, and so he left the sparrow in his wife's care. The woman didn't want to feed it, so she went off and did something else. She might have gone fishing too, I don't know. And while she was gone, the sparrow ate the starch that she had mistakenly left out. When she came back and saw that her starch was gone, she was angry and she cut the tongue of the sparrow off. And the sparrow, who was scared and injured, I don't blame her at all, or it, flew off into the mountains into an inn that was inhabited by other sparrows in a bamboo grove. You guys can already see the similarities, probably. Now, the old man, who was saddened by the fact that his friend was injured by his evil wife, he went up to the up the mountain to the inn in the bamboo grove and went to go find her. The sparrows were actually happy to f see him, even though it was his wife who had caused all the trouble to the sparrow. And they offered him two re one of two rewards. They offered him a big basket or a little basket, but they wouldn't tell him what's inside. The old man, who knew that he couldn't carry the big basket ba down the mountain anyway, he chose the small one. When he got back, he opened it and discovered it was full of treasure and like gems and stuff. And the wife, who was greedy and evil, she went up up to the mountain and she wanted the big basket, though she was warned not to open it. She did, and it was full of monsters. In her panic, she fell down the mountain and died. So she got her comeuppance in the end, and I guess the moral of the story is don't mess with nature? I guess? Or just be kind to all those around you. I, I think that would be a better a better moral to the story. But yeah, which is, it's a very cool reference to mythology and culture. <laughs> How many times I've said culture it, as like one sentence, just be like, culture. <laughs> I don't know, it's <laughs> it's sort of like how that one up here says uh, video games as sentences. He's just like, video games. Anyway, I'm making too many references to everything this episode, so let's go ahead and return Sparrow to, or Chun, to her father. I bet he was glad to see her gone. Hey, 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 chirp. Hey, you, Scruffy, what are you doing in Sasa Sanctuary? The whole Sparrow tribe is on high alert at the moment. No one gets through this gate until the boss's daughter is found. Huh? Ch Chun? Hi, I'm back! Ugh. Chun, are you okay? Boss, boss, she's back. Chun's back. Oh, snap. I like how he has his own personal, like, swivel thing. It's just really cool, because 
It seems like he's really lazy because he's so fat. Pop! Pop! I'm surprised she can fly with those tiny wings and that fat body. I'm sorry, Pop. I won't go out on my own again. Chirp. Uh-oh. The boss is... Delighted. You sure about that? This white doggy saved me, Pop. You'll give him something to thank him, won't you? Chirp, chirp. My muscles on my wings are huge. I can fly and ferry my big body around. The boss has accepted you. You're lucky. Okay then, you better come inside. Well, now that we've enter gain gained entrance to Sasa Sanctuary, that's going to be it for this episode. I know our purpose for this episode was to get one of the canines, but the map that uh, Fusei gave us did show that one of the canines was in here, so I guess we'll find him soon. So, anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and next time in Okami, we're going to go into the Sparrow Inn. And hopefully I won't have to explain as much mythology, because I s feel like the game hasn't been get getting quite enough attention. Also, what is up here? Wait, what? Whoa, I didn't even know this was here. Oh, well then, let's go ahead and get some free praise. Nice. Sweet, okay. A free five praise. Sweet, okay. And once we get 100 more praise, I'm probably going to upgrade my stuff. So, yeah, because we could really use an upgrade. So, uh, I think that's going to be it. I release new episodes of Okami Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes. And I'll see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Okami.